Hey guys, Saf here with another Raid Shadow Legends video. It is Friday, it is a summon rush, it is the second summoning event of Eastrid Dream Song, which means, of course, it is time to summon some sacred shards. Now, this time round, we've got a times two sacred. It's a bit weird. We don't normally get back to back times two, but I think since they've introduced times two primals, the whole sort of every other week scheme has gone out the window. Now, in addition to the times two sacreds right now, we also have a times 10, which is not that good because let's face it, times 10 now is always not as good as times 15. We're used to progressive event summons. There is a times 10 chance for Falmond Mornsword. He is the new faction unity guy for the Sacred Order. Now, if you wanna see him in action, uh, Scratch basically did a full play test on the test server. I don't have access to the test server, so I'm not able to do it in this video. But if you wanna see him in action, you can go check out Scratch's video. Uh, he's just released it yesterday where he does a full build, full break play test. And you can see really what I think is the case that he is probably the hardest hitting champion in Raid Shadow Legends, probably in the right team. It is not gonna be very good outside of sort of arena settings in terms of hitting those numbers, right? You're not gonna be able to hit those numbers in clan boss or in certain areas because it's all about waiting to take your turn. The best way to consider him is he is an ultimate death knight with damage. That's the way you would use him. That's the way he works. Essentially, you wait your turn. This is additive, meaning that after 10 turns, you are immune to damage. You cannot take damage. There are exceptions to this rule. Narsus will ignore this rule. Karato will ignore this rule. It's a damage reducing passive. Both of them are reduced. So those would go through this passive. Otherwise, he is immune to damage. Additionally, his A3, which is his big hit. This is like the Siegfried Wukong style hit. This will also increase damage by 20% every time you don't take a turn. So every time someone in the battle takes a turn, 20% more damage, 20% more damage. It keeps scaling and going up and up. And if you hit three faction allies, then you will attack all remaining enemies with all surplus damage. It won't crit, but other things like book damage, mastery damage, weaken, those can increase the secondary hit. The book, it's just your critical damage can't, a bit like Sun Wukong. That's why Sun Wukong's second hit sometimes will do a lot more damage than the first hit because he's still remultiplying certain elements of it, just not the critical damage. And the really cool thing, you'll see this with the play test with Scratch. If you ally attack with him, he will use his A1. But if he uses A1 on someone like Ultimate Death Knight, Necret, Duchess, Sifi, Rotus. He doesn't use his A1. He reuses the Burning Courage even if it's on cooldown. So it's almost like getting more Wukong A2s, getting more Siegfried A3s. So he is very strong for damage dealing. The other abilities, not so much. This one is what is really it is all about. He does have some other cool things like if you have three allies, you can't be locked out. Very handy into a Crixie or Yumiko. So the question really that comes to mind, is he worth it? In my opinion, he's the best unity we've had in terms of the power he, he brings. We thought Aeselin, the stalwart, was gonna be very good. Not that powerful, in all honesty. And his kit's a bit backwards. You have to kind of like remove your shield to be able to deal damage. And whilst Fina is very powerful, the High Elf faction is not the best Hydra faction. It is a pretty good faction in the sense that you've got Royal Guard, you do have someone like Arbiter, you do have people like uh, Islin, very good provokers, but not like that S tier meta. Warmaster does make it more interesting. He is S tier meta. So Finer plus Warmaster is a very powerful combo, but you really do want to try and get like up to the three or two at least. Three is where it gets for good for the passive. Two is where it really good, gets good for the, the A3 here. So that is the, 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 the fusion schedule. Falmond is on at the moment. I think he's actually quite good. He's worth, you know, maybe pulling an extra sacred shard if you have it. We're still gonna need to summon th 3150 amount of sacred shards. So that works out roughly at around about 6.3 sacred shards. So we need to summon at least six sacred shards if we want to get our hands on these fragments. Now I didn't do all of the champion chase. I only did the first ones. So I need to pull all six sacred shards. I do have 10. I might pull all 10 for these. Now, in terms of other legendaries that are still really, really powerful, it is a times two sacred, so it's a pretty good chance for you to get a legendary. Harima is currently dominating the arena because of the fact that she is actually strong affinity to Armands, and she is also able to deal with lots of the, the strong champions like Narsus. She's really, really good for that. So she is kind of rising in priority and strength even though the mythical champions are also kind of dominating as well. But Harima is still holding her own. For me, I would love a Harima. Anyone like a 
a Hefrak or a Kaimar would be great. I still don't have those. Those would be quite good. I wouldn't mind someone like a Ignatius. There's some stages where that could be really handy in Centranos. But pretty much Kaimar is what I'm really looking for here. I would really like a Kaimar if I could get it. I don't have a reset that is beyond Renegade and I don't have any lockout. So both kind of situations would be really good. You can see this. There's lots of sacred orders I don't own, um, but a lot of the, the legendaries now. If I do pick up a wall master as well, extra bonus. So we'll see what happens here. So let's see. I'm going to pull probably all 10 sacreds at this point. I've got some pretty good shards. I don't really need much else. I'm going to try and get this Falmond. I really would love the Falmond. He's a very powerful champion. Hopefully you have as much luck as I'm about to not have luck and we'll see what we go up to. Let's, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's see what we get. The first one is an epic, of course, and it is Lady Quillen. Lady Quillen is okay, a pretty decent epic. Uh, it's actually one of the epics you can get on a login um, at, when you first start your account. She's decent damage. She gives a bit, bit, good bit of buffs. It's just a little bit conditional with some of her elements. Um, pretty handy in some Centrano stages if you need her. Another epic. You, you know, times two sacreds is not that crazy. It, it's still a pretty low chance, only 12%, right? It's, it's still a low chance. I'd like to get at least one legendary in 10. Get Lockwine, he was a prime hero, and we also had um Chancellor Yasmin a bit outdated. We get a legendary. Ooh, it's a Crypt King Growl. I already have a Crypt King Growl that is not a new, but it is at least a duplicate, I guess. Uh, I don't really use my Crypt King Growl, he is still really, really good. So he's an AoE HP burn, which is great on a three turn cooldown. He then has his A3 where he will place a freeze and place a burn for three turns if they're already under a burn. And he has a 100% chance um, of placing a decreased attack if they're under HP burn or freeze. So he's a very good solo carry, very good sort of burn champion, but I don't really need him. I already have him. We really still want this Kaima. Do we get anything else? Okay, we're back to epics. It's fine. We, we've got um, Cannoness, not, a, not an amazing epic. Come on, Falmond, or Wallmaster. Those are the two I would like. Wallmaster, Kaima, or Falmond, those are really high up on my list. Illicinia, one of the Mikage epics. I don't need it, I have Mikage, so that is not a problem. Do we get one more legendary in this list of sacreds? 10 sacreds. Can we get one more? Just one more. I don't really need any of these epics. They're all kind of useless. Coffin Smasher, better than the new Daily Login Champion because he does... Oh, that's Burgoth, it's not Coffin Smasher. I was thinking of Coffin Smasher. He's better than the new Login. We get one more Legendary! Oh, it's an Islin! Oh, oh, that's not great. I've already got an Islin. Oh, oh, that's that's painful. That is painful. I mean, we complete the event, which is is great, you know? It is great. But, and two legendaries and 10 is pretty good odds, but not the legendaries we really wanted. I mean, how many points are we at here? Uh, another one would get me a legendary book. Let's let's trade in. Uh, we've been holding on to this in case we need it. Let's trade in this for the Sacred Shard. Let's, uh, let's summon one more. Let's summon one more. One more for the road. It's probably going to be a rare. It's probably going to be epic. It is an epic, and it is Skuram. It's not the high elf we wanted. All right, well, you know, sometimes you win them, sometimes you lose them. Does this improve anything? Do I get a better faction guardian? Well, I was already 10 out of 10 here, and it's a third dupe, so that's pretty awful. High elves, I was already 10 out of 10 here. So, um, yeah, it's pretty nothing. Pretty pretty nothing, unfortunately. Um, yeah, not much that really, that really doesn't do anything for me. Nothing whatsoever that does. Absolutely nothing whatsoever. Which is a shame. It is a shame. Um, that is the reality of an endgame account where all I really want is targeted ones. Prism events are much better for my account because I can target the legendaries that I want and I can add some more unique ones. And I know I knew I knew the times 10 was really poor anyway, because times 10 is such a low chance. But you know, those those legendaries, if you pulled them and you didn't have them, like Islin is top tier, is a great provoker. He's a very good provoker for Hydra, a very good sort of content master. He he can't die. He, he's literally invincible. Whenever you put Islin because of this passive, he will not die to most content as long as he's in a very decent defense build. He doesn't even need regen gear. He just literally will never die. So the only way he can be killed in Hydra is to be consumed. The only thing is I already have him and it's the same with Crypt and Grot. I already have them, so they don't really help me. There you go, guys. Hopefully you get more luck than me when it comes to your times two sacreds. Hopefully you get Falman. He is well worth it. Make sure you go check out Scratch's video if you want to see the actual full playtest. And I'll catch you guys in the next next video.